Last week I pulled this 20R motor out of the 1980 parts truck from Oklahoma and this engine sat out in the open for years without an oil cap, without an oil filter, and without a water pump. Not to mention, no carburetor or air cleaner. So this was fully exposed to the elements. Today, I'm gonna tear it down and we're gonna see how the inside of this engine looks. The first thing I'm gonna do is wheel this out in the driveway and hit it with a wire brush and get some of this heavy grime off of here. That's a little better. I can see all the stampings now. So I pulled the intake and the exhaust off in the last episode, as well as some of the EGR stuff that was still left on the motor. We already are missing the alternator and the water pump. So let's start with the distributor. 12 millimeter bolt. And the smog pump just has one bolt that goes from the bottom with a nut in the back, similar to the alternator. And these are 14 millimeters. Next, I pull off the passenger side engine mount. Let's get this round wire out of the way. And four. And now I have a 14 millimeter for this bracket. And a spacer was behind there. This must have fallen back there from somewhere up in here, uh, back when somebody was pulling parts off this motor when it was a parts truck. And over on the driver's side, we have another motor mount. and the alternator bracket. These are all 14 millimeter bolts. That's 19 millimeter. And here is the secret timing cover bolt under this oil here. A lot of people pull out the rest of the bolts and forget about this one and yank on the cover and do some damage because this is often covered up with oil. I don't know if you guys can see that bolt down in there, but look how the head of it is worn sideways. I think the chain's been rubbing on that for a while. We'll get a better look at that after I pull this head off. I like to break these loose by hand first. tighter than the others. Cylinders all look pretty nice. A little bit of rust right there on the edge of that. Four looks pretty rough, just right here. Yeah, just on this half of the cylinder. Uh, the heady gasket appears to be intact. I'm still not exactly sure why this became a parts truck, but uh, the cooling system was a little bit dirty. Got some crud in here, some rust back in there. Perhaps they ran uh, straight water instead of mixed coolant. Let's see how the valves look. Pretty filthy. All these carbon deposits are on there pretty good, at least on the exhaust side. Aside from all the carbon deposits, I don't see anything bad here. I think I scored a good 20R head on this parts truck. 
Let's see if there's any rust in here on the intake valves from not having a car around the engine all those years. Yeah, this looks great. I guess it's pretty dry out there in Western Oklahoma. Out with the crank pulley that I battled in the last video. Oil pump. Looks to be in good condition. At this point, we only have uh, one, two, uh, three, and four bolts holding on the timing cover, so I'll pull that off next. So this chain guide actually broke. Uh, it snapped off here. You can see where it used to be one piece broke right off and that's why it was sitting down so much farther and that was probably rubbing maybe down here sitting down here could have been causing the chain to rub into the timing cover a little bit right there here's a better look at those bolts so I'm sure we have had some uh, metal shavings from these guys floating throughout the engine in the bearings yeah that's the first time I've seen one break like that and it was just sitting down in there and I'm sure Maybe that was making a bad sound, and that could have been why they stopped driving this truck. And with that guy being broken and loose in there, moving around, this chain was probably having a lot of play, and that's what wore down these two bolts. The upper one's not as bad, but that lower one, I'm going to have a fun time getting that one out. And with the whole right uh, passenger side of the truck being wrecked, uh, once this engine started making that noise, that's probably when they threw in the towel. Next, I remove the 12 millimeter bolts and the two 12 millimeter nuts holding on the oil pan. But it was pretty well bonded to the block, so I moved along the perimeter with some big old fat flatheads to separate it. So, unlike the 22R I tore down in a previous video, I'll put a link to that one in the description. This one does not look as well cared for inside. That 22R was probably a perfectly good running engine. I just didn't know the history of it. Uh, this one, I can't say the same. Slide the crank pulley back on here so I can rotate the crankshaft. We'll do one and four first. Not awful, you know, just a used bearing. Yeah, I mean, again, I'm probably taking apart an engine that if I threw a carb on and a water pump, probably could have been a working engine. A little more wear on this one. Oh, there he goes. Yeah, some, a little bit of scoring on this one. A little bit over here too. And we've definitely got uh, some more wear on this berry here. Looks about like the rest. And same for number two. Two looks really good. Number three's got a little bit of scoring on it. The crank looks good as well. I'm actually surprised uh, how good the inside of this motor is. Now for the 19 millimeter cap bolts.
I'm having a heck of a time getting this uh, middle cap out here. And the middle cap is the one that has the thrust washers, the thrust bearings on each side. All right, I'll get back to that in a minute. But uh, look at the crank here. The journals do have some wear. Uh, this guy here is pretty nasty. Yeah. And then number uh, between three and four is really bad. There's a rust in there. I can drag my fingernail on that right there. But all the others are looking good. And the back cover here uh, sits up almost flush against these pieces for the engine stand. And I think that might be why I'm having trouble uh, moving this crankshaft up. So I'm gonna try and pry on this and uh, see if I can break it loose because I did take all the bolts out before I put the engine on the stand. Nah, it's in there good. It's not moving. Also, keep an eye on this if you have an engine stand. Uh, this is sliding out from here because I spun this, so I loosened this bolt, which releases it from that drilled hole there on the bottom. And once this is no longer going through that hole in this outer case here, that will allow this piece here to slide out. If it goes too far, well, you've got a big problem. Just from hitting it and shaking it so much, having all the weight down here at the end is gonna naturally cause that to slowly slide out. So let's see if I can scooch this back in a little bit here. There we go. Now let's see if there's anywhere I can grab onto this with a slide pulley. There it is, all right. Rust washers and the middle bearing here. Looks a little bit nasty. Oh, it's not that bad actually. Now I needed to remove the rear cover, but the engine stand mounting hardware was in the way. So I took the weight off of the front of the engine using the hoist and a strap, then removed two of the mounting bolts for the engine stand. With the front of the engine supported with the hoist, I was able to loosen these back two mounting brackets, and now I should have some room to remove this back cover. Except I still can't. I still don't have enough room to get it out around the crank because the corner of the bottom one is in the way. I goofed. I should have put the strap under the whole block instead of on the crank because now I can't lift the crank up to bring this piece out with it. Let's get sketchy here for a second and see if just these two mounts here are enough to hold the weight of the engine. Oh yeah. So I'd say the broken timing guy was the culprit that got this truck parked for its last time. But in addition to that, there is just a lot of dirt in this engine. Like, look at these journals, they're all clogged. Yeah, all these are pretty dirty. So now that this is done, my next step is gonna be stripping down the rest of the frame of the Oklahoma 1980, and I'm gonna be updating the front end with 84 to 88 suspension so that I can use two inch drop spindles up here. And then once all this is done, we'll go back over to the Ohio 1980 and I'm gonna remove this cab, get this engine on the stand, fix the major oil leak I have on this, which I believe might be the oil pump seal, get this cab all cleaned up and ready to go. I got a little bit of welding to do yet here on the back and side, and then get it over onto the rust-free Oklahoma frame. And then when that is finally all done, I'll finally be able to start working on this bed. Because sadly enough, I think it's gonna take less work to fix this bed than to repair all the rust on that bed. Thanks for watching.